God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. We gather to celebrate the goodness of God and all of God's creation. So Kimberly, what or who are you thankful for? I am thankful for friends who bring me cake. <laughs> awesome. Marta, who or what are you thankful for? I think I'm thankful for my family. And to our beloved virtual community, what are or who are you thankful for? <laughs> Is it us? I don't know. <sighs> Welcome to our virtual worship series, Sacred Earth, Sacred Worth. I'm Pastor Lida. I'm Kimberly Emerson. And I'm Marta Lear. And we welcome you to Westchester United Methodist Church, a place where everyone is welcome and all are affirmed as beloved children of God. This is a place where love works. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn we experience God's loving presence in many ways, all around us and in all places. In a moment, as we are able, we will turn to face the East. To those of us who may be a little directionally challenged, you're invited to stand and turn a quarter to your right. Every day is the dawn of new beginnings and the renewing breath of life. May we be bearers of God's light and share messages of hope. We turn to the south. Spirit, draw near. We ask Spirit to stir compassion in us. Help us to know the power of transformation possible with God. With open hearts, we pray for the energy to share God's love in the world each day. We turn to the West. Spirit, draw near. We give thanks to the source of all being for the waters of our body and earth. Wellspring of divine wisdom, satisfy our thirst in the parched places in your world. May we be filled up and spill over with your loving presence. We turn to the north. Spirit, draw near. We are grateful for our Creator's unconditional love. As spirit in the flesh beings, we pray for God's help to live out love. We turn now to the center. Christ, our light is our center. We see one another. We remember that all is sacred. Garden of grace, your gifts abound. The sacred signs of your presence are all around. Help us to remember that the whole earth is holy ground and all of creation is of sacred worth. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn here. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour, gathered here in the mystery of this hour, Body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, gathered here in the strong strength of body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn near. And all the people said, Amen. It is through the work of spiritual practice that we move beyond fear into compassion and discover our deep and true selves. Engaging in spiritual practices, 
whether that looks like something typically religious, like praying, or not, like walking, have intentionality in common. They draw us closer to the creator and who we were created to be, free and compassionate beings. What practices in your life draw you closer to your true essence and closer to compassion for others? Please join together in the spirit of prayer. Compassionate God, you know, you who know our hearts and love us without condition. Create in us desire to see your essence within us so that we might see it in others and honor your holy presence in all things. We praise you for this place, this day, this people, this planet, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's explore how God is working in and through us and all of the universe to renew each day. Each moment offers opportunity to express and to affirm the divine at work and encourage us in our creative collaboration with the divine. Here is a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel, listen. Our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, Well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one, and there is no other besides God. And to love God with all of the heart, a full understanding, and all of one's strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more important than all kinds of entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, you aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is a word of God. All creation is a word of God. All, All creation, creation speaks volumes of God. God. All right. Is anyone else becoming weirder the longer we are in this pandemic? I mean, I'm not talking about things like not wearing pants on Zoom conference calls or recognizing that you only comb your hair if the camera is on during a Zoom meeting. I mean, everybody does that, right? Oh, thank goodness. But I think I have become a bit weirder than I was before the pandemic. I've noticed that sometimes it's harder to be around people. Of course, like so many, I mean, I long for being able to go to a movie with a friend or hang out at a restaurant with a bunch of friends, but, but now I'm used to crossing to the other side of the street when I see someone approaching me. At the beginning of the pandemic, I used to look at them and, and I would try to smile at them with my eyes, but, but now I don't even want to look at them. And I'm actually annoyed by that person, particularly if the other person is not wearing a mask. And if that person is not wearing a mask, I now assume that they belong to a group of people who believe that the pandemic is a hoax, that science isn't real, and that we are on opposite ends of the spectrum in our beliefs and thoughts. And therefore, I don't wanna look at them. Isn't it weird? And I think it's kind of scary that I find myself making judgment calls without even really seeing the person anymore. And I'm pretty sure that the other person is looking at my wearing a mask in the same way. I mean, doesn't that totally go against everything that we just heard in our scripture reading? In our reading, Jesus gives us instructions. He says, you, are, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, with all your strength and you will love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so I'm getting weirder. Our country has two pandemics happening at the same time, COVID-19 and racism. 
and I am having a hard time looking at someone without a mask on, without going into this weird, totally judgmental mindset. These double pandemics have torn the veil off of our brokenness. Brokenness as a country, brokenness in our healthcare, brokenness in our judicial system, in our police departments, hello. Brokenness in how we treat people. Brokenness in our churches and the brokenness in ourselves. And for me personally, my awareness that my quickness to judge and assign all sorts of unfounded attributes to someone simply because they are not wearing a mask is a problem. Because it kind of gets in the way of loving God with all my heart and loving my neighbor as myself when I'm being a complete judgmental jerk. So this week, I attended a seminar given by Reverend Jasper Peters, who is the pastor of Belong Church in Colorado. And in his lecture, he reminded us that the United Methodist Church is predominantly white. He shared that the church didn't accidentally become white. It became white at the expense of people of color. It became white because people looked at other people and made judgments and assigned certain beliefs about them based on the color of their skin. There are many pastors and churches who are lamenting the murders of people of color, lamenting that our congregations are not diverse, lamenting that few people of color are leading in this denomination. But in far too many churches, white privilege and white supremacy are comfortable. Ideas supporting white privilege have been given places in our churches for a really long time. Too many clergy, too many congregations have perhaps decided that it's not their place or their role to challenge the deeply broken ideas in our churches. In American churches, we have perhaps decided that we don't need to or won't challenge ideas that are in reality anti-Jesus, anti-Christ, anti-Christian. Because I'm pretty sure racism is anti-Jesus and anti-Christianity. So I wonder if a white supremacist came to one of our worship services would any of their fears or beliefs be challenged? If we are to follow Jesus' command to love God, love neighbor, we need to decolonize our churches and this country and create inclusive and healthy spaces. Reverend Peters shared a quote that I had never heard before. It's an ancient Chinese quote and it says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. As a country, as a denomination, and as Christians, we have been given another chance to get that tree of anti-racism planted. In creation spirituality, one of the core components is that the work of our spiritual practices must move us beyond fear into compassion and help us discover our deep and true selves. Through the work of our spiritual practice, we move from fear to compassion. If we follow Christ, our spiritual practices, our faith, must move us beyond fear and hatred of someone based on the myth of their otherness because of their color, their country of origin, their gender, their gender identity, their sexual orientation, their economic status, or even the language that they speak. Carol Vaccariello, a part of the creation spirituality movement, an elder in the United Church of Christ, shared that her deepest fear was that she would never be enough to be what she was called to be. She was raised in the Catholic Church and was told that she would never be able to be a priest. She's a girl. Girls could not be a priest, but she knew even when she was a child, she was called to be a priest. 
She grew up with the fear that she could never be what she knew she was called to be. She shared that as she began growing up and, and maturing, she had to give up everything which was important to her to pursue her life. She lost her church, her friends, her family, and her career as a teacher in a Catholic school. She said that she had to learn to love herself. She shared that we must look into the mirror and have compassion for the person looking back at us to help that person in the mirror get past their fears. What would this world look like right now if everyone figured out just how special they are, how special we all are? The more that people feel loved, the more we can deal with all the fear that is happening all around us. Gun violence, rampant racism, the harm we are doing to our planet, love. That's what Christ's message was and is and will be. Love. It's like that, that Beatles song. Uh, all you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Love is all you need and fade. Love is all you need. Love. It is what we need to move past our fears. Fears that we are not loved. Fear that we are not worthy. Fear of the other. And let me share with you, in the kingdom of God, there is no other. Move past the fear of losing the things we were taught about one group of people being better than another. The confidence which comes from love and compassion so that when we see systems and practices and people who tell others that they are not worthy, we will fight back. We can love and change and learn and plant the tree of anti-racism today while acknowledging that tree should have been planted hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Ask yourself, are my spiritual practices and beliefs moving me beyond fear into compassion? What fears do you need to let go of to follow Jesus and to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself? When you cross the street because another person is approaching, Remember that you are crossing the street to keep that person and yourself safe. Look at them. See their sacred worth. Embrace your sacred worth. Let go of fear and discover that spirit of compassion. Because love is all you need. Love is all you need, <laughs> so I can resist. <laughs> We recognize with open hearts the pain that coexists with goodness and gratitude. We listen to the groans of the world, and the Spirit helps us to grieve and to intercede on behalf of those who suffer, letting go of our fear that can make things worse at times. The opposite of poverty is not property. The opposite of both poverty and property is community. For in community, we become rich in friends, in neighbors, in colleagues, in siblings. Together, as a community, we can help ourselves in most of our difficulties. For after all, there are enough people and enough ideas, capabilities and energies to be had. They are only lying fallow or are stunted and suppressed. So let us discover our wealth. Let us discover our solidarity. Let us build up communities. Let us take our lives into our own hands and at long last out of the hands of the people who want to dominate and exploit us. You're invited to make a fist with your hands and to imagine in those clenched fists is all that you are holding tightly. Fear, anxiety, worry, grief, loneliness, helplessness, 
It may be a specific circumstance that has you tied up in knots. Squeeze tightly and now slowly open your fists and imagine a letting go into the loving embrace of the spirit who transforms all things. As we let go and open up, we see that now our hands and hearts are more ready to hold with love the concerns of others and the pain of the world. our time of prayer together. Let us call to our minds and hearts those people in our lives who need our advocacy, our presence, and our prayers. We hold them with love. You are also invited to speak aloud names or places or situations which need our prayers. We hold them with love. You are invited to place your hands on your heart. And in this silence, we lift up all those things difficult to put into words, but that we feel in the depths of our heart. a version from writer Parker Palmer. You are invited to be in an attitude of prayer as we share this different version of the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need and give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. Be yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. Each week, during our Sacred Earth, Sacred Worth worship series, we will explore six essential ideas found in creation spirituality, an understanding of God's world and our place in it that embraces life and all of life as deeply connected. This week is Spirit of Compassion. This week is all about love. We celebrate the love that God shares with us and we share that love with each other in Take a piece of paper, computer paper, brown paper, construction paper, or any paper that doesn't have writing already on it, and cut out a paper heart. We've posted a heart-shaped template on our website in case you need one. On one side of the heart, you are invited to write what you do to fill your heart. And on the other side, write what you do to give your love away. You can tape it to your fridge, hang it in your window, put it in your car, wear it as a necklace. 
is a great reminder that we all have the spirit of compassion. You're invited to take a picture of whatever heart you create and post it on our Facebook page. If you wish to share your gifts and support this faith community and its work in the community, you can do it in a couple of ways. You can go to our website and click on the online giving button. You can also mail a check to the church at, even though we are not meeting in person right now, the church is not closed and your support helps us to make a difference. Through our gifts and our presence, we welcome all to God's inclusive love. With these gifts we receive, let us spread the news of love and hope. Before we close our virtual time together, our prayer for each one is that we may embody peace and passion, compassion and power on behalf of spreading goodness and caring for creation throughout the week. One of the things we are doing to spread goodness over the next few weeks is by supporting suicide prevention programs and awareness. You are invited to join in the Alive and Running 5K for Suicide Prevention on September 13th. This year, it's virtual. Check it out. We also support the LAX Food Pantry. You can drop off your donations to the church and we will deliver them to the food pantry. You can also join our Alive and Running team if you want by going to wumcla.org and clicking on the link that you find there. which were used in our virtual worship. Today's liturgy is inspired by the book Creation Spirituality by Matthew Fox. The worship series is created by Dr. Marsha McPhee and the Worship Design Studio. A quote used during our time of prayer is from The Source of Life, The Holy Spirit and the Theology of Life, written by Jürgen Moltmann. Our theme song, Gathered Here, is composed by Phil Porter and used by permission. Our prayer song, Breathe, is composed by Michael Stillwater and used with permission. And our closing song, What Wondrous Love Is This, is from the United Methodist Hymnal. All you need is 
Care for each other. Care for all of creation. Let go of your fear and share your spirit of compassion. Love is all you need. Wow, it got windy, huh? <laughs>